Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the Rise of Entrepreneurship and Prince Rupert session uh, run by the Prince Rupert and District Chamber of Commerce. My name is Janet Song, and I am the Business Innovation Project Coordinator for the Chamber. And this is also in partnership with Ecotrust Canada's North Coast Innovation Lab, where we are partnering with them to support um, the local economy as they are making partnerships with different local organizations to support an economy that provides for life. And I, before I get started with uh, this session today, I want to recognize that this meeting is taking place on the traditional territory of the nine allied tribes of Black Alums at Melakatla. Um, so I'm going to look into the agenda today. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do um, an introduction of this agenda and then we're going to do a fun thing we haven't done, which is a roll call. I would love to just go through the participants. If you can change your name with like your first and last name, that would be great. And you just say your name and um, your organization and if you want to share about something you want to learn today but it'll just be a quick like 10 second intro because i really want to create a space where we know each other and you can put on the chat if you want to connect with them privately so it's in a way networking online um and then after we do a roll call we're going to then do um a walkthrough of some support uh supports that are for interested entrepreneurs those who are interested in entrepreneurship, um, as well as part two, we're going to go through some partners who are going to share about support um, to those journeying with entrepreneurship already. And then finally, we're going to have a discussion with some entrepreneurs, um, local entrepreneurs here. Um, and then we're going to conclude wow. and I'm going to talk about the next webinar. So we're going to get started with a little road call, roll call here. I wanted to create this community um, ecosystem for us to share and put a face to a name. Um, before I start um, officially, well, I feel like I officially start because we all kind of, um, if you guys um, could like think in your mind, what is a problem that you as an entrepreneur or as an organization is trying to solve? Because it begins with understanding how are you making an impact and where you are and what are you solving exactly? for people to use your service or product. Ask yourself that question as we go through the resources today, whether it's writing it down or having that thought in your head, because an idea can spark so many things and it can make so much impact in our, in where we, oh, we, are, we are placed. So without further ado, I'm just going to get started with our um, uh, presentation today. Um, we might have to like tack off a few minutes off of the usual presentations, but I just wanted to say I, do not regret doing this introduction. This is the first time, but it's so nice to see people, seriously. Um, so I'm gonna screen and share right now. Um, and let's go back to sharing my presentation. Okay, so um, let's start with part one, which is um, some resources to help those who are interested in entrepreneurs. But first, you may ask, what is the chamber? Because we are the host, the Chamber of Commerce, and I just want to quick make a quick blurb of who we are. So number one, we advocate for our members, um, our, the business community with government, as well as other organizations around town. We are a community connector, as you can see right now, we're connecting people and having networks. By the way, if you want to connect with someone, make sure you put on the chat box, feel free to message them privately. Three, we're a news communicator. Check out our Facebook page um, for you to check out the latest news on our local business um, arena. And, uh, four, we help with business retention, expansion, session support like these webinars that happen every Monday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And lastly, we help with youth empowerment. Um, if you've seen Scott, he has been leading the way this year. So, um, and, and also some of the other rising stars that we have with our mentorship program that we have here. But um, we did a roll call, so now we're just going to go through um, key resources from Hecate Street, Tricorp, and Coast Mountain College for our part one of it. So I'm going to first introduce um, Nina, who is going to share a little bit about um, how Hecate Street um, supports entrepreneurship in this town. 
Hi there, as I lose my speaking notes, of course, because that's what we're, we're trying to do. And I didn't get a chance to introduce myself before, but I think a few people have introduced us, or myself, that is. Uh, thank you for having me, and thank you, Janet, for um, putting this on. This is super important for us to be able to connect and get together, especially at this time, and really work together as a community to support each other, program services, really see what the uh, entrepreneur ideas are out there. Um, we know that when there are, um, Things that happen in our community well i guess they're you know labor market impacts there is also opportunities that come out of it so kind of that different thought in what can be out there for for um opportunities and look at it a different way or be part of the solution and working together so we're really pleased that you're able to to have us here and uh, appreciate everyone that's come together to, to provide this service um for us we're heck it's right we have a number of programs and we have been around as a uh, um, Laura had mentioned before we've been here for 25 years serving the community and actually in self-employment or entrepreneurship and getting people started and it's incredibly amazing to see how many businesses have started um, we can see on the screen you'll see some cappuccinos entire automotive uh, the Fukusaku um, uh, Mission Health and Wellness, Good Time Games, uh, the list is just amazing and huge and may not even be aware that this is some of the services we've had an opportunity to work with uh, these businesses to get them started and, and moving forward. So as a self-employment program, um, it's been around actually, it's a national program. So we are um, providing the service and have been for 25 years um, here, Haida Gwaii and uh, really would like to take an opportunity to let people know that this is something that they can utilize and uh, maybe look into. For those that are um, looking and exploring this opportunity, this is a great service. And we can kind of uh, uh, describe a little bit about how this works and uh, how we can get you uh, to this situation where everyone else is uh, moving forward in, in these COVID times. So I apologize, I have lost my notes, so I'll try to focus again. <laughs> But um, so basically what we do as a program is we have a consultant that works with an individual and we have up to 48 weeks of support. So that really offsets um, when you're starting a business. What that might look like um, is a support that can help you kind of focus on your business, really explore that and get started. Uh, we evaluate where you're sitting in your um, business, if it's a viable and we kind of support you with some ideas and creativity, kind of sort um, get that to flourish. Um, I think that I'm just going to grab this. Um, we have a number of people that work with an individual. So what we do is really uh, focus on getting them prepared and ready, seeing what their skill sets are. We can even focus on uh, developing their skills. So usually an individual will come to us and they're underemployed or um, not employed and they've been on EI in the past 10 years. It's kind of nice to see a uh, single parent through income assistance or a person with a disability. So they're looking at maybe using their skill set in a different way. Um, we've had a great uh, opportunity to work with a number of individuals and the clients that come through our door really have been um, amazing. Like the information that they provide us, um, the, the work that they do on their businesses and to move forward has been incredible. Resilience has been one thing. So they're very innovative and moving forward. Um, we've had a very good opportunity to work with uh, one individual and I'd, I'd like to introduce Di if he has a few minutes. He can talk a little bit about his experience um, in working with self-employment program and how that started for him. Are you available, Di? Yeah, I am. Hi, Nina, and hi, everybody. So when I first started uh, my business, I was actually on EI, and I heard about this self-employment program uh, through Work BC. And I went to talk to Hackett Straight. It was really helpful for me because it gave me uh, almost a year to uh, plan my business and make it possible without worrying about uh, my financial situation because I was receiving a uh, living allowance. And having a conversation uh, with the advisor every single week helps me a lot. And even before I opened my own business, I had a three year sales projection and like this thick uh, business plan. So I was ready to move on and without self-employment service, I don't think I am here right now. So. Thanks to Hecate Straight and everybody. Thank you, Di, and, uh, and congratulations. I noticed that you had a, a special recognition. You were able to uh, 
get to some sponsorship, which is a wonderful too. Great work and being resilient in what you're doing as well. Thanks, John. Oh, thanks a lot. Um, so we've had, uh, like I said, individuals in our local community all the way to Haida Gwaii. There was a couple more names that I think Lori should have shared with me. Uh, Terry Lynn is, is a staff member that's on now and she's actually a bustling bee, so she does some great resources. We've had uh, Tidal Zone Silver Studio, which does some great work out there. Um, uh, Haida Gwaii Trading, uh, so that's the news agency. Um, so the, the list goes on and we've been like, I think it's 120 individuals we've touched in over 25 years. So just amazing. So the work is done with the consultant and, and they work one on one with the individual. They do workshops and planning uh, to get that business plan to flourish. And so what we found is um, we were able to really use the community services as well and kind of work with that. And I can use an example of one um, and nice to see that they're presenting today as well. So we had an individual that had come out of um, the uh, entrepreneur program through Tricor um, and they were looking at doing a childcare program and they were at a point where they were kind of looking at now I'm ready and prepared to start the business I'm uh, have a chance to get uh, this into flourish and, and our program is really about starting the business getting established and sustainable for an individual and we look at the long term not just the 48 weeks we're looking at long term as we've seen these businesses that are stated they've been here and really hold our community together um, they are um, one of our major business um, partners in our communities and they're supporting uh, other people for employment um, and so this individual was able to get her training and some an idea of what she wanted to do and then with us she was able to actually put it to flourish and really get the numbers down really look at what this looks like whether it's uh, building in her home and getting that prepared and that was um, uh, Seal Cove daycare and then she was able to I believe she took her training originally from the college um, to take her training and move forward um, and then off to do her business and so she's been in business for a few years now too so a great opportunity how we can and I believe her funding came through she was through the Nishka um, funds as well so it's really good to see how one person can work uh, through the program, we are here to do the supports and the living supports. We're not actually accessing or providing um, some startup funds, um, but we do have an expectation of being a person prepared to have some, you know, some assets and things ready to go like you would normally for applying for business. So that's really key. And I've noticed that it's really, really important in these times when we have changes in our economy that this sometimes becomes a really good opportunity for people. They've, they've sort of stood on the, on the sidelines. I think I can use another example. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, sure. yeah. I love your examples, but yeah. I, I also made a huge introduction, which is why okay. I'm afraid that Certainly. I need to make sure I have time for everyone else. But I exactly. really do appreciate how you have introduced Dai and how Dai has made a huge impact in our community and how you've been sharing anything else. So how about I give you 30 seconds to edit off and I'm going to have to like shift gears to um, Certainly. our next <laughs> I I said, I lost myself. But the main thing is, is really we're here to support individuals thinking about those opportunities and kind of source it out. Our contact information, you can contact myself or Lisa Tapper. She's our service lead. We have a few staff members here that you can see here to Haida Gwaii. So you've got some good contacts now and network opportunities. Um, and we can really think about what that is. We can even put some training in there. So we're really about supporting individuals and, and accessing those resources in our community. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. She, you have been on so many calls and Shalana has just been such a wonderful support sharing it. And we have such a huge support in the Heck It Straight um, side. So I really do appreciate everything. Um, make sure you guys take a picture of this if you guys can. Um, if you guys wanna contact Heck It Straight on Facebook, their website, um, I posted a little link on there. So check it out um, and yeah, contact them if you have any questions. And I'll also send the slides too, so no worries. Okay, so next one is Tricorp. So, David, would you like to go on and share a little bit about Tricorp? Sure. Thanks, Janet. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk a bit about Tricorp. We're an Aboriginal capital corporation. We've been in operation since 1990. So, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary of this year. We operate a revolving loan fund. So, whatever we lend out comes back in so we can lend it out to other entrepreneurs. And so we're going to talk about a bit about our program. So we have a bunch of programs that can help entrepreneurs, uh, Indigenous entrepreneurs save money. So the first one is called the First Citizens Fund. 
Uh, this is basically a loan available for an individual up to $76,125. And the main feature of this loan is that it's 40% forgivable. So uh, an entrepreneur would only pay back 60% of the principal plus 11% interest, but it always works out to uh, paying back less than you borrow. So um, this is a program that we administrate for the province of BC. Um, so uh, next one is the Tricorp Loan Fund. This is an in-house fund that we look after. Uh, it's a regular fund, so there's no uh, forgivable portion, but uh, a feature of this is it's more flexible. You could do more stuff with these funds. So I'm gonna do, go through it pretty quickly because I know time is tight. Uh, the next one is the NRT Equity Matching Program. So this is designed to help an entrepreneur with the 10% cash equity a person needs to start a, to basically have a, a loan, loan, a, a loan with Tricor. It's matching dollars up to $5,000 and it's basically designed to help, like I said, the 10% cash equity portion. So an individual came up with 5,000, this program would match that $5,000. Um, and that's an honor payable contribution. And uh, next we have the Aboriginal Business Equity Program. So this is a contribution program that can cover up to 40% of a project cost. So for example, on $100,000, up to $40,000 of that project uh, could be a non-repayable contribution. So this, this program also helps with uh, business planning costs. If an individual needed to hire somebody to do a business plan, they could use these funds to help with that cost as well, up to um, a 75% contribution where the applicant would do 25% of the application uh, of the cost. Uh, next, we have the Tricorp Indigenous Business Stabilization Program. This is the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, basically the emergency loan program that we're administrating for the government of Canada. We're doing it through the, um, through our national organization called NACA. And I'm just gonna put our link to our business development page up on the chat for people to take a look at. So the beauty of our programs is that they all can be, um, basically they, they can all be stacked together in one loan application or one loan, one financing package. So um, on a $100,000 project, I mean, there could be really a huge amount of savings for an entrepreneur if they access a first citizens fund loan at fifty thousand dollars they access the nrt equity match at five thousand dollars and then finally the if they access the abep um aboriginal business equity program funds with interest they probably pay back around forty one thousand on a hundred thousand dollar project so it really does represent a huge savings um, uh, for the applicant so our application package is on our website on the link that I put on the chat, on the chat uh, program there. And it's all down at the bottom of the page there. There's uh, four different documents that a person start with. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what it is, the Coles Note version there of our programs. Awesome. Thank you so much, David, for like sharing that. Um, there's also uh, one more program that I do want to quickly highlight, uh, which is the ACE program. Do you want to talk a little bit more on the ACE program a little bit? Sure. And uh, we actually do have somebody online who took it as well. Um, our friends, let's take a look here. Reed. But yes, Reed, there you are, Reed. So Reed took the program. So he actually attended the program and took it. He, he may want to say a few words, but... Um, uh, it's up to you guys. Yeah, go ahead if you want to say a few words or do you want to wait until your final journey? Your, your choice, Reed. Um, we'll do that at the end just for time's sake, just so I'm not repeating the, yeah, great, the same. Great, great. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, no, so, thanks. Go ahead. So, yeah, it's basically the, the ACE program is a collaboration between Tricor and uh, University of Victoria. It's basically uh, something that was uh, creation of our late uh, CEO Frank Parnell and Brent Mainprize of UVic and what Frank did was um, he attended uh, he was friends with uh, Brent Mainprize and then Brent told him about this, this great program that he has going on at UVic so he invited Frank down to Victoria to just sit in on the class after Frank was done with that class he was very impressed with it and said he wanted to get this class up in the north so yeah that 
basically from that they they've started a yeah Corey Stevens is a program manager they started an ACE program that basically has an in-class component as well as a mentorship component and Corey Stevens is the program manager for that and the program itself basically is designed to assist Aboriginal entrepreneurs take a take an idea take their idea to the next step to basically working towards um, the launch or startup of their program or their uh, uh, business um, and basically after they're done their in-class component they work with mentors who are in the area of uh, their business idea so for example if somebody was going to start a, a basically a fitness gym they would they would match up the applicant uh, to somebody who's already uh, successfully operating one of those kinds of businesses awesome thank you so much David. But yeah so yeah yeah, sure. for, for walking us yeah. through both Tricorp. Honestly, there's a lot of loans, a lot of awesome yep. opportunities of matching as well. So I know that loans might be a little bit nervous about you guys. So maybe there's something that could help you guys with more gain than loss in any way right now that we need. Um, so again, take a look at the link that David put. Um, also, if you have questions, feel free to put that on the chat box and also message, um, yeah, put that on the chat box. If we can't get back to you, um, we will forward it to our speakers, but um, I'm just gonna roll with um, that. If you have any questions, put on the chat box, we'll get back to it. Okay, so next person is going to be um, Trisha from Coast Mountain College. Would you like to share a little bit about that? You're currently on mute. Let's see, let's see if I can unmute you on your end. There we go. Is that yeah. better? We okay, because I got my phone going, I got the screen going, I've, I've got many, many things happening so I can actually participate here. Um, yes, I'll try to sort of squish stuff down. Do you have the slides um, yes, to sort of support? There we go. Um, so I'm representing the business um, area. I am not of the business area, just so so we have that clear. But I am happy to share with all of you um, some of the opportunities Coast Mountain offers for those of you who want to enhance your business skills, grow your business skills. If you have something really great going on now in Prince Rupert, uh, some of the training that you can expand on might help give you a more global perspective of how you could uh, grow your grow your industry, your business idea beyond um, the nor region, northern region. So if there are a lot of, there's up to one year certificate, two year um, diplomas, or you can also go for your university credits if you wanted to go for um, more of a business background. The two core areas are the marketing and entrepreneurship and the accounting and finance, as is shown on the screen here. Um, all of the business programs help you get a very holistic view of what market, of what business involves, um, while also helping you kind of hone in on what your particular areas of interest are. So if, if you're more interested in the entrepreneurial piece, you can take the marketing and entrepreneurship. Um, you'll learn how to do social media marketing. Um, you'll do design and, and social media campaigns. All of this you'll be guided by a knowledgeable business and marketing instructor. So they'll help walk you through and you'll be doing real life projects. So when you walk out with your diploma or the beginning of your second year into your degree program, you actually have things in your hands that you can walk out into the world with and start either start up your own business or move on to get your um, degree at UNBC or U of Vic or wherever, wherever you choose to go. Um, the other piece, um, did you, did we whip past the um, other course? Wasn't there? Um, oh, there's, okay, sorry. No, you got it all. So yeah, it's um, Seth Downs is the chair and he's the one you can connect with for any questions about um, the business and he's the chair of the public business and public administration programs and he's the one to connect with to inquire and get a sense of what your interests are um, again you can qualify for scholarships um, we have the first nations um, 
an education coordinators and they can work with any indigenous learners who may want um, to help getting their financing sorted out. Um, other students can certainly access different loans and whatnot to get in and get their training so that they can then move and work with the rest of the community or um, yeah, go, go and pursue their degree. Yeah, yeah pursue, pursue your education. Look into it. As a master's student, I think that it's super valuable to, you know, understand holistically what, what do you want? What are some skills? Maybe it's a particular course. You know, it begins with asking ourselves these questions and contacting people. It's totally free to go on the phone and just, or go on an email and just be like, I'm interested in this and see where it goes, friends. Okay, so next up. Thank you, Patricia. I do want to say I appreciate you sharing about business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. So next is support for our current entrepreneurs. We have someone from Free Entrepreneur, Community Futures, as well as Northern Development. I do want to ask, I'm so sorry you guys are part two, and uh, if you guys could like summarize it in a really nice, concise way. I'm sorry if I cut you off. I just want to also give time to people who, who's also going to share about their journeys here. Um, so we're just going to whip through. Try your best to make it. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little thank you, thumbs up in a chat. Um, <laughs> to, to, to give you some warning. Thank you. So we're going to go to um, AJ from Futurepreneur. Yes. Hello. Can you go next slide, please? Yes. Here, um, our contact information, I'm based out in uh, Vancouver, BC regional office, but um, I have uh, Sue Ross, my colleague who's based in Kelowna office. So grab this snapshot and reach out to us if you're interested in. And Futurepreneur, next slide, please. Futurepreneur is a national NGO, Canadian NGO we support. We've been around over 20 years right now, and we've been supporting entrepreneurs both funding, business loan, and mentorship program. So um, our program is that, uh, designed for only entrepreneurs who's Canadian or PR under 40 years old. So that's the most important thing that you have to check eligibility. So next slide, please. Um, so two important programs that we focus on. So it's called startup or side hustle program. Startup business loan is up, available up to $60,000. It comes with the mentorship program for two years. How we assess is based on your credit score and business plan, cash flow projection for the next two years. But mentorship is um, included there. And we do customize matching system internally. And also our headquarters is based in Toronto, but we cover all across Canada region. So make sure you apply apply and communicate uh, through the process, all different departments located at different locations. So it could be BC, it could be Toronto. So there's a time difference if you are waiting for our prompt reply. And next slide, please. And I heard from Janet that uh, most of participants today's event looking for some resources. Yes, we do have a free, free resources for everyone available on our website, futurepreneur.ca. Um, these three things are my favorite and our go-to um, page actually. So business plan writer, cash flow template, that's um, Excel spreadsheet. And here's my point that people, entrepreneurs, um, tend to underestimate cash flow, like importance of it. It's, it's really important and hopefully you have a look at our template. It's been guaranteed by other financial partners, community partners, and also bank institutions, etc. So they highly recommended about our platform, our template. So take a look. This is really helpful for you to prepare as an entrepreneur, especially for first time um, startup owner. And also blog. We do post articles and useful industrial um, resources information uh, weekly basis. So have a look. Uh, so those three things are available. I'm going to share some links, direct links on our chat box so you can access to it. Yep. And next one, please. So this is how we help for free, like just divide into four stages, right? Develop ideas, explore. And we are actually sitting um, all over, but basically launching stage. So when you're ready with the idea, you made a draft of the business plan and cash flow projection, then you're looking for funding. Come to us. That's time to meet future premier, I think. Yep, that's all from me. And feel free to reach out to me and my colleague Sue. Thanks.
Thank you so much, AJ. I really do appreciate that little spectrum, some free resources. We like free at this time. We need help with cash flow at this time. So check out their great resources. But now I'm going to introduce Eli. He comes from the Community Futures office, which I am currently in. So go Eli, share some resources from Community Futures. Hey, thanks. So Community Futures, we are similar to a lot of the programs here. We offer advice and funding, brainstorming, and any kind of a support for any entrepreneur that they need. So we are essentially here for entrepreneurs, both starting, budding, existing, veteran, every single type under the sun for growth, startup, expansions, and just wanting to figure out new ideas. It doesn't have to be linked to money. Our door is pretty much always open. Well, you ring the doorbell and then we can just kind of chat. And so we have the service area from here, Torred, and all our surrounding communities and next please. And so I uh, should be able to go quickly on time here because we just stick by three main words uh, that we kind of repeat. So that's advice, finance, and results. So advice, as I mentioned, we help with business planning assistance, do brainstorming sessions, information gathering for people, someone who doesn't know how to do a certain pro uh, process, we can help them with that or I can go out into my network and see who's a, who's a, good, who's a good bookkeeper in town, those kind of small things. Financing, we do regular business loans. Uh, we are very flexible terms. And we also have a RRRF COVID relief fund, which I'll get into in a second here. And then lastly, the results is that we like to work with clients and we like to be very flexible after all funding. And so something I think that kind of really sets as our unique selling proposition is just our local face-to-face one-on-one we really work with people as best as we can and we really try to make sure they're able to achieve what they can and maybe help them pivot. So uh, next please. Uh, there's a couple slides for this, but I'll just do this part really quickly. So the RRF is the sister fund to the government fund, so that $40,000 business account fund. So it's, the terms are the exact same in terms of you have up to the end of December 2022 to pay off 75% of whatever you borrow, and then the rest of the 25% is forgivable. And you use it for all the expenses that you might have accrued or you might have coming up due to financial loss due to COVID-19. Um, you're not able to do any debt swapping or double dip with other programs, but this is available for anyone who was viable as of March 1st of this year. So anyone who was, their business was doing great or they are just starting up, but then all of this happened and now they're behind the eight ball, they can come to us for a really, really flexible and great term loan. Um, something, then here's some links here and uh, I can put some links in the chat as well. Uh, one thing I want to kind of make a note because I think I'm the second last to speak um, is that we heard a, quite a number of people speak. Um, you don't really have to find yourself loyal or beholden to anyone. So all of us work really well together. So if you are an entrepreneur who's looking for options, hit everybody, mix and match. Um, I kind of recommend that for a lot of people like Heck It Straight Self-Employment Program is awesome. Tricor, the, I love the ACE program and they have their good programs. Whatever works for you, that's what we want. So I just say, yeah, shop around. Thank you. Thanks so much, Eli, for sharing about that. That's why we're sharing this to you. Again, this is going to be recorded. If this is overwhelming, I just wanted to do a fun experiment of getting everyone together to share about who they are before we dive into resources. So um, I, yeah, we're going to quickly dive into um, uh NDIT, but before I do want to say a quick thing about what Eli said on Community Futures, you do get a 25% forgivable. Basically, that loan, if you pay it back, this is interest-free, and you get 25% of your money back that will help you if you pay in the right dates. Again, like, check out their website and Community Futures if you want to drop that link, Eli. Awesome. Um, now, I'm going to just give it to Felicia to just end off our speaker series there, and then we'll have some little stories to end off with. So go, Felicia, go. Perfect. Thanks. So I'm, I'm mindful of time and want to ensure that uh, the entrepreneurs on the chat today have the opportunity to share stories. I'm going to keep this really high level. Um, all of our programs and information is found on our website, northerndevelopment.bc.ca. Our business support programs are here to support those entrepreneurs who are already in business with, um, you know, with their businesses operating and generating revenue. We have funding programs. 
uh, that businesses can access to help support uh, consulting projects, innovation projects, and we have the Supply Chain Connector and Love Northern BC um, business databases. I encourage everyone to check the website and you'll find under our team page the email addresses to myself and Anna Peasgood. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you have on our programs, funding, resources, or supports that are available. The business programs have been fully allocated uh, for the year, so those program intakes have closed, although we're happy to discuss uh, future projects when those intakes reopen and uh, there's funding available again on January 1st of 2021. Um, Janet's got my contact information as well, so anyone that didn't catch this, uh, reach out to Janet. All the other community partners are familiar with Northern Development. They'll help get you in touch and we're happy to have a conversation. Awesome. Thanks so much, Felicia. Like Northern Development Initiative Trust pro provides a lot of support and funding towards some businesses. Um, so I will share um, Trisha's email as well as I'll quickly tell that into our slideshow. Um, and yeah, feel free to contact her to ask her about any support on funding. Be resourceful, guys. That's how you get some funds. Um, so now it's a discussion time. So we have two entrepreneurs that I do want to share and touch on their stories for them. And if we have, I'm going to open it up, okay? Like, honestly, we it doesn't have to fully end at four. If you need to leave it for, totally, I get it. But like, I want to continue this discussion for like 10 more minutes because these are important stories to share. And I think that let's add the human side to it. So if you got to leave, got to leave, but I do want to share the stories. So um, Yvonne, do you want to start first and then Reed will go next and we'll open it up to everyone. So Yvonne, if you want to take it away on your story of entrepreneurship really quickly, some challenges and what are you dealing with it right now? Hi everyone. So challenges. The biggest thing for me was um, or has been having enough funds to employ someone else besides myself uh, so if there are avenues and I'm quite sure there are uh, where there's some cost sharing to get employees in here for janitorial specifically um, that is something that I've struggled with as an entrepreneur um, since COVID I have my numbers have gone down a couple of hundred um, and that's on a daily basis because I have turnover every single day um, however, I am still doing well enough to pay these bills. Um, I am currently waiting for the, the green light to go ahead with expansion down in the basement of my gym. And that is dependent on some funds that I'm waiting for. I've applied for funds. Um, let's see. The COVID, it's, it's limited the amount of people that are allowed in my gym per hour. So there's no just come and go whenever you please. There still is, but you risk the chance, depending on whether you come during peak hours, of being locked out. If, you're, if your membership is still good, for example, you come to my door and there's 25 people in here, you will be locked out until the next hour. So it's limited and inconvenienced my membership that way. However, I have... People are pretty good at spreading out their times and trying to come at odd times or odd hours to accommodate themselves so they, they, they'll never be locked out of my gym. Um, we've moved forward as far as e-transfers go. They, that's the way of the future. It keeps me safe because I'm the main worker. I'm the only worker in my gym. Um, so what happens is I do an initial new member intake, that's the only time, unless they lose a key, and then I'll do a, a, a uh, scheduling an appointment for key, um, renewing a key. However, everybody just sends me e-transfers so that I, I remain safe. I, I don't risk the chance of getting sick, that type of thing. There's, there's guidelines of, um, for everybody of COVID. Uh, to keep your distance, don't touch your face, that kind of thing. So other than that, business is going pretty good. Everyone's being as positive as can be, despite these times. So yeah, 
Thanks. Thanks so much for sharing, Yvonne, about like just current um, challenges. And you know, it's been four years that you started genetics and like it's such a key gym in this town. So thank you so much. Um, so, um, so to summarize the key things that you would like support, you were talking about wages, like to help support more workers. You're talking about support in terms of helping you with expanding your biz, um, your basement and just understanding how to navigate those safety protocols as it's kind of making it hard to like run it at max capacity. Is that correct? The three little key things? Am I missing any? Well, I've already applied for the funding. It's just a matter of waiting in these times. Bureaucracy takes its time. You know, everybody has to sign those, uh, sign away the funds. So I'm in that position right now as far as expansion goes. It, it is going to happen. The, the building has already agreed to it for me. So no matter what, it's going to happen. So I'm excited about that. And that's just to meet the demand because my gym, a lot of people recognize the value of a pay-as-you-go type, um, type of gym where you're not locked in. You know, And a lot of people, especially during these times, can't afford to have someone take funds from their account every month, no matter what, you know, what if they're sick? What if, you know, food is more important than a gym membership? You know, there's different scenarios. Everybody has their own lives. So I don't obligate people that way. So it kind of is like playing Russian roulette in a, in a way for me that I, I'm hugely dependent on the membership to make sure that I, I have those bills paid every month. And if I didn't move forward in my, in my business with passion, I wasn't a believer in what I was doing, I would probably have failed the first year. Um, but I love the idea of helping people. I love the fact that so many people have never even stepped in a gym before until my gym opened, you know, and there's some pride in that. And I show up every day because of that. So whether I get paid above the bills, is irrelevant for me right now as long as my my gym stays open everything is running smoothly things are good but in regards to this, the um, troubles that's where I would see my biggest thing is being hiring a janitorial service as opposed to just individuals that could could um, you know how there's some high turnover in a lot of places because people just move on I prefer to hire a janitorial service like natural business that is specific to my need and just pay them on a monthly basis that um, I personally think that would work. So I could focus on training people. I haven't been able to do that. And that's my, my biggest thing is I want to, that's my passion. I want to teach people how to be in a gym and be fit. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Yvonne. I really appreciate your journey. And now we're going to hear our next story from Reed and Matt, um, whichever way of how you guys want to share, but like would love to just forward it to you guys in terms of your entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Thanks, Janet. Yeah, no, I think uh, Matt had to take off for four o'clock. So I think he jumped out. I'm not sure if he's still here. Are you still there, Matt? Let's see if he's on the list of... Yeah, I'm here. Oh, he's here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, I can just kind of start with like for us in particular for the agency, because I run other companies as well. Um, I guess my initial journey or taste of entrepreneurship was when I was about 10. And uh, we um, would be selling various things when I would visit my aunt and uncle on uh, Haida Gwaii and different things like that. And uh, yeah, beyond there, fast forward a little bit into high school, I was in what was called the Aboriginal Entrepreneurship Program. So it's kind of the, the high school equivalent of what the, the ACE program was and where uh, my business partner, who, my cousin actually, who also we graduated together, we, we started and brought back the canteen program, which kind of sunk because of the lack of funding and things like that. So that's something that we, uh, I kind of dabbled into by accident because I, I graduated, full disclosure, I graduated late. So I, I was someone who missed a couple of the uh, elective classes of all things and uh, that yeah, it was, it was something that I thought was, you know, a real bummer. I didn't get to walk up with my friends and things like that. But instead of taking just two classes just to skim by and graduate for my, my grade 13 year, um, I decided to load up on business programs. And that kind of, you know, led me into a whole different life that I never thought was uh, possible or even an option. So I think that, uh, yeah, from going fast forward a few more years, there was uh, the Northwest ACE program, which I owe a lot of where I am today from that program and that it gave me a whole new different perspective. And there's a, there's a little tagline that UVic has and it says the world looks different from here. 
Um, and that's with the Gustafson School of Business. And that's totally true. You see the world through a whole different set of lenses and eyes and, and a world of opportunity rather than you look at problems and see the negative. You look and see problems and then you find solutions. Um, and that's kind of what Matt and I did. You know, we started initially, it was, yeah, about 2014 when I first completed the social media strategies and web design program, which was another UVic program. Um, and it's, it led the groundwork for something that we thought was just going to be, I thought was going to be complementary to my other businesses that I had going at the time. It was maybe just going to help me advertise and different things like that, but it ended up um, kind of catapulting us into this new opportunity where we kind of reverse engineered this idea, seeing that, you know, and Matt and I were talking one evening, and all of a sudden it was like, you know what, there's no one in Northern BC that does what we do. So why don't we just start doing it so as a service rather than just doing it within you know the company i was doing to advertise be an effective advertiser for the things i was doing outside of that but yeah and i and, I, and, it, and it's definitely not all sunshine and rainbows and matt like matt and i like to look at this as uh playing the infinite game so from outside looking in people see these guys don't have an office they're young blah 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 you know boomer this boomer that you know boomer chatter in the background where they you know they have these kind of condescending different comments and feedback and things like that where they uh you know they don't they don't take young guys seriously when they start companies and things like that and for us we we don't look at it as finite so we're not yeah we don't have eight locations or whatever you know things like that now but that is not going to say that and determines where we've been where we're where we're headed so i think that there's a lot of things that uh that a lot of people don't realize that if you look at things in finite you know you look at your competitors you know xyz they're doing xyz corporation is doing great over here Sure, great for now, but they don't see the world in the infinite game where we're constantly, it's perpetuating the game, the rules, you know, they kind of, it's just to stay in the game and stay alive. And that's, you know, especially with things like COVID right now has been definitely a huge um, challenge for a lot of business and challenges for us. Like for me, I have a sole proprietorship where I did some contract work for the University of Victoria, helping them facilitate some of their programs. And, you know, in, in April alone, there was $12,000 in contracts canceled just within a blink of an eye. And it was, yeah, for a lot of businesses, they're really feeling that pinch as well. And, you know, and we felt that too. And, but we found a way that there's, there's a little bit of a comeback story here for us because when it first, the pandemic first started, Matt and I had a lot of big, big ticket clients that we were trying to sign. And then everyone kind of put things on hold for a little while. But now it's starting to look like businesses are really starting to focus on the need for advertising, having an effective online presence, especially when we're, we're spending so much time apart. So for us, yeah, we're just, I'm, 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 I'm really honored to be a part of this process and helping kind of build that capacity. And Matt and I have some, some ideas in the works and we've kind of discussed with Janet and Anthony, we won't reveal it here, but, uh, because it's still kind of in the works, but we've got some things to help kind of contribute to the capacity building portion of uh, entrepreneurship in Prince Rupert. And I think there's uh, there's some exciting stuff ahead of us. And there's yeah, then there's and we're more than happy to be able to help business. So if anyone else that's you know needing some online presence, things like that. So I won't I won't do too much of a plug, but if you're needing help or things like that, you can reach us at. Uh, uh, right now we're info at northernonlineresults.com, but we've just rebranded. So I've actually, I'll do a little logo merch plug in there. Um, but we're North Media Agency Limited, and you know for us. We started with an original brand that sounded kind of, you know, that was, it covered what we did, but uh, we found the need to modernize it. And I find a lot of business today is, is adapting and, and being able to kind of keep up with the times, even with us in, in our industry, we're constantly having to learn things, keep up to speed with updates and different social media platforms and web, web platforms and different things. So yeah, it's a, it's been a quite the journey to say the least for us. Yeah. And no, we've had, uh, we've had a few different, uh, bumps in the road and learning curves and we're a we're a company that started from scratch so we we actually started that completely on our own funds we didn't acquire a loan or any additional capital and there's a being a kind of a low startup it wasn't too big of a deal at first but we found as we needed more and more professional equipment there was a lot of purchasing and different things like that and then trying to get people to get in the mindset of modernizing their advertising like a lot of businesses see the value of maybe having a facebook page or maybe this and that but they'll spend thousands and thousands of dollars in old media um, techniques and not realize that you know the potential of building your own audience and that that's where we we kind of separate from other platforms and other advertising ones where they focus to primarily bring traffic to their platform so that they can make them and make sales from that group versus us building your audience so that it kind of builds your network not only just for people to watch the neat things you're doing on social media but also to have a client pool and potential customers so yeah but all in all i think that yeah the my, my full endorsement of the ACE program, it's a phenomenal life-changing program and Futurepreneur is a great organization as well. I've done some contract work for them and then I also took part in their Thrive North uh, 
initiative and their business challenge and things like that, which kind of helped kind of their little stepping stones that kind of led to where we are today. And we're extremely grateful to be able to have the opportunity to give back now. So no, and thank you for allowing us to do a little plug. I know we're a little tight for time and people are s slowly creeping out of the room here. So I won't get, uh, get the cane wrapped around my neck and uh, pulled off stage. So I'll let, I'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up uh, in summary there. Yes. I uh, do want to make a quick announcement, but please read, please do share your, um, contact info about how you provide digital marketing help very needed in this community right now and in the north so please make a plug there on how they contact you next tiana okay she is a self-starter also an entrepreneur um herself um and edward jones she's going to say a little bit before we end off i do want to open it up in a time if anyone else does want to share afterwards i am still a listening ear and i still would love to support so um i'm going to pass it off to Anna, and then if you have any like discussion i'm going to leave this room i'm still going to be in this room actually this room will still be left for discussions for like you know five seven minutes just to just to create that discussion i think it's important so go tiana <laughs> Hi again, everyone. My name is Tiana Farrington. I, again, I'm the local financial advisor for the Edward Jones branch here. So the next session next Monday, July 20th from 3 to 4 p.m., I will be presenting a webinar titled Navigating a Year of Change and Challenge, a Business Owner's Guide to Survive and Thrive. So if you're like many business owners who've been navigating this year of change and challenge, you're likely wondering what you should do next. So this presentation can help you understand the support available for small businesses, learn what options you have for the short term, uh, look for opportunities for the long term. Uh, in the presentation, I will cover knowing and understanding what government support programs is available, knowing and understanding what other non-government support is available, uh, discussing important considerations in the near term, important considerations in the long term. So that will include things like updating powers of attorney, having appropriate disability or critical illness insurance and et cetera there. Um, also important considerations in the longer term. So tax planning or estate planning strategies and prescribed rate loans. Um, also how Edward Jones and I can help partner with small business owners and with their tax and legal professionals to help their businesses achieve success. So uh, registration is required. So please uh, see the links. Or I don't know if we got the links in there, um, but I am co-hosting with the chamber. So if you go through their Facebook page, you will see um, all their events listed there. So that is where you can see the event with the details does have the Zoom registration link. Um, or please feel free to give me a call at 250-627-7400. And it's 627-7400 if you have any questions or if you'd like us to register you for you. So thanks again. I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tiana. I'm just plugging in the um, chat on, oh, great. You already posted that there. Um, um, on that, whoops, making sure I have everyone. Also, I do want to give a shout out that um, there is going to be a uh, board support program, um, virtual support program that Michelle just posted on the chat box. Um, there's so many boards, so many people wear so many different hats. And sometimes how do you adapt to change? Not just finance, but just how do you navigate and pivot? So there's going to be something that will be taking place on Wednesday, July 22nd. Um, I will, um, it will be on our Facebook page. I will also give you all this information in the email. Don't worry, this is why I have your email on a registration link. Um, but I do want to respect everyone's time. So I wanna say that this is an initial call. Um, this is not the end of entrepreneurship conversations here because we're gonna have more conversations afterwards. If you wanna give me a shout um, on other things that you wanted to mention, please just email me. Um, it's .ca. I just remembered I missed that. So it's Janet S. at ecotrust.ca. Um, if you want to give a shout in terms of anywhere of support, love to help. This is the beginning of many conversations. 